Hey, Shiva Rajaya here from VitalCoaching.com. Woohoo! I made it to the other side of the river. Uh, it just came from that part. It was very challenging, you know, some parts up uh, water up to the top of my legs. I had probably like uh, seven, eight branches of a river to cross. And uh, the main thing is that the water is freezing cold. It's icy, glacier water, slow water. So just early morning, it was freezing. And uh, on the feet and the, the legs was really, uh, yeah, very challenging. A couple of times, when the, the stick really to hold really strongly with very strong current coming against me. Uh, almost failed a couple of times, but luckily crossed to the other side. As I was saying, you know, the, the, the waters are probably unusually high because it's the spring, so the snow is melting. My guess is that if you come here at the end of the summer, the waters must be much, uh, much lower because it doesn't rain much, and so it must be much easier. But right now, wow. So probably the, the uh, according to what they said in the village over there before taking off uh, the guides and uh, the other people I met uh, nobody made the, the pass yet this year and uh, there were lots of parts where you know landslides and so it was obvious that uh, the track hadn't been cleared yet for this year that's it Beautiful Paralang, Palangla, Jesus, I have some problems remembering this name somehow. Parangla, Parangla uh, Pass and, and Valley. It has been about uh, 40, 50 kilometers since uh, the pass. And now I have another 45 kilometers to the end of Tsumori Lake. I think it's 15 to the beginning of the lake. And then uh, there is a little, uh, probably a little village or something where I can get some uh, some extra supplies and food. I still have tampa. You know, tampa is like uh, this uh, barley, uh, lightly roasted flour. It has been working really well. I still have, uh, you know, like two kilos of flour. Keep you going for, for a long, long time. Uh, over there, the this valley enters. I mean, actually, the the river flows in that direction. It doesn't flow that way where I'm going. So it flows in that direction and goes in uh, in the direction of uh, of Tibet and China. Oh wow! It's been quite uh, quite an intense adventure, especially by the fact that there is absolutely nobody. You know that it's really really isolated. Uh, yeah, but we're well worth the adventure, especially. You know, I, can, I cannot tell you much about the, about the mystical dimension of this adventure. There is lots of uh, symbology and uh, a whole inner story while I'm uh, doing this um, this trek. You know, it's a little bit about the physical adventure as well, but <clears throat> it's mainly about. Uh, quest and uh, a certain aspect of my own um, development so when I come on this path I come with a very specific target or an energy that I'm working on and during four days it's like uh, mantras and energy and focus that I I keep very specifically focused on and uh, Last night was uh, were incredible dreams. Uh, the the whole second part of the day yesterday I had this uh, rush of massive fire and uh, energy kicking in. And um, so you have these uh, these experiences, mystical experiences, life force, connection with nature. You know, feeling of beauty and 
and bliss and realizations and so on. So it's a whole inner story that is going on during this, uh, these days in, uh, in the world. And it's, that's the reason why I'm doing it. You know, it's not for, I mean, a little bit for, for the sport and the experience, the track, but uh, 95% of my motivation is a, is a spiritual and mystical drive. I just want you to know that. And I cannot share here the whole dimension of that because it's tricky to understand and also because it's a long, uh, complex story, and I maybe I, I'll record a new, another video when I'm back. <sighs> Still freezing cold, six o'clock in the morning. Off to uh, Tomoriri. I love you. Bliss to you from.